I rock the rock, it's kind of rock, so rock, and if you rock it with the rock, then you rock it with us. I rock the rock, it's kind of rock, so rock, and if you rock it with the rock, then you rock it with us. I rock the rock, it's kind of rock, so rock, and if you rock it with the rock, then you rock it with us. I rock the rock, it's kind of rock, so rock, and if you rock, just repeat after me right here, just say, whoa, whoa, whoa. today. We have a wonderful lesson. Today's lesson is about Romans Road. It's a wonderful lesson with a great video. Paul wrote the books of Romans and I want you to really pay attention today. I have three questions I want to ask you. The first question is peace and happiness was replaced by what? This video is going to tell you about the very beginning. How Adam and Eve were in the garden and things happened. So play, pay close attention. The second question is, Jesus' death made a way for what? I'll repeat it. Jesus' death made a way for what? That's question number two. And the third question is, what does it mean to follow Jesus? What does it mean to follow Jesus? That's question number three. So get ready now. Put on your Holy Ghost listening ears and watch carefully so you can answer those three questions. Here's the video. With love and affection, the Apostle Paul wrote to the young church in Rome, To those who are loved by God and called to be his very own, I am eager to tell you the good news of your Messiah. In this letter, Paul would reveal things about God that could be understood only through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God to save everyone who believes. 
Paul reminded the Romans that, long ago, something terrible had happened. Sin entered into our perfect world. It all began when Adam and Eve disobeyed God, bringing a dark curse over everything God had created. The special relationship that God had with his creation was broken. From that point in history, the curse of sin was passed down from person to person, affecting every man, woman, and child. After the fall, people were born slaves to sin. Paul wrote, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Sin broke everything, including friendship with God. People no longer trusted God, and they rebelled against Him, becoming hopelessly lost in the darkness of sin. Peace and happiness were replaced with fear and worry. And there was good reason to worry. The curse of sin constantly put healthy people at risk of sickness and disease. But worst of all, sin caused everything to die and be forever separated from the goodness and glory of God. Of this awful truth, Paul wrote, The wages of sin is death. But from the very beginning, even before the world was created, God's loving thoughts were toward His lost creation, and He had a plan to win them back. Because death was the only payment for sin, God would send His Son, Jesus, to take the place of the lost who were sick with sin. Jesus showed the most amazing act of love and friendship by dying for the very ones who had disobeyed Him. Paul wrote, Most people would not die for a righteous person, although some might be willing to die for a person who does a lot of good things. But God showed His love for us that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. God came to save us just as He had promised. Jesus' death made a way for people to be forgiven and for every sin to be carried far away and forgotten forever. There is no other power on heaven or earth that can save people from sin and death. By the name of Jesus, all people can be saved. God will rescue anyone who cries out to Him and asks for help. Paul wrote, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. When people believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, it changes everything. By faith, they will confess Jesus as their Lord and ask Him to lead their lives. Believers understand the great price Jesus paid for sin and humbly give their lives to God. This is a big decision and one that can be very difficult. Following Jesus means turning away from sin and selfishness and instead trusting God for every part of life. Paul wrote, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Sin makes God angry because it hurts and destroys the creation he loves, which is why God has promised to punish sin. Believers don't need to fear God because they are forgiven. God sees those who believe in Jesus as his own children and in his eyes, his children are righteous and perfect. The good news of Jesus is that sin's wages have been paid, and the gift of salvation belongs to God's children. Paul wrote, Now there is no longer punishment for those who are in Christ Jesus. Instead, you have been given the spirit of adopted children, so that now you cry to him, Abba, Father. that video wasn't it kind of cool okay you ready for those three questions remember the first question the first question said peace and happiness was replaced by what 
The answer is peace and happiness was replaced by fear and worry. That's right. After they sinned, Adam and Eve, all that peace and happiness left. And it was replaced by total worry and fear. Okay. I bet you got that right. Number two question. Jesus' death made a way for what? I bet you got it right. Jesus' death, it made a way for people to be forgiven and for every sin to be carried away and forgotten forever. Did you get that? I think I'll repeat that one. Jesus' death made a way for sin to be carried away forever. Number three question, what does it mean to follow Jesus? I know you know that answer. Following Jesus means turning away from sin and turning away from selfishness. That means giving your whole self to the Lord. Saying, Father, I belong to you. I'm following you. I'm obeying you, Jesus. That's what it means. Okay. Now, let's talk about the big idea. The big idea for this whole lesson is before God created the world, God had a plan to save us from sin. And what was that plan? Or rather, who was that plan? Yes! Jesus! J-E-S-U-S. -S. That was the plan. The perfect plan of salvation from our Father. Woo! That's the big idea. Now let's go to our memory verse. I know they have it on the screen. The memory verse comes from Romans 5 and 8. And it says, but God showed his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Isn't that wonderful? Let's say it again. But God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 verse 8. That's our memory verse. All right, you guys. Now we're getting ready to go ahead and look at another video. And this video is talking about salvation. God's plan for salvation. How do you get saved? What do you have to do? Pay attention so you'll know and you'll be able to tell your friends and family that it's so easy. It's like ABC. I don't want to give away the video. So go ahead and take a look. I'll be right back. There is a large gate that opens to a wide road. Just inside this gate is a view of all that the heart desires. It boasts of many paths so that it appeals to all. But the way, however attractive, is the way of death. There is another gate that is smaller and far less appealing. The path is sometimes lonely and often challenging, but it leads to a perfect kingdom, one that lasts forever. Jesus warns, enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life and only a few find it. It is at this fork in the road that the traveler must decide his path. At first glance, the wide road is the most promising. He is comforted by the masses who have chosen it. After all, he thinks to himself, what bad can happen in the company of so many? But as he moves towards what seems to be the better path, his attention is drawn to an evangelist pointing the way toward the road less traveled. The messenger cries out to him in urgency. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father 
except through me. Then in further warning he adds, The way of life and the way of death are before you. Choose wisely. From where the traveler stands, the broader road appears far more attractive because of its many self-indulgent options. But he cannot shake the evangelist's invitation and warning. If the evangelist's words are true, by surrendering to the lesser path, the way of the cross, the way of self-denial, the traveler will find his life. But if he chooses to trust the vain promises offered by the greater path, he will, in the end, lose it. The truth of the evangelist's message continues to affect the traveler, and all at once his eyes are opened. Far off in the distance, he can now see that the broad path leads to destruction. The life that seemed right to so many, in fact, ended in eternal judgment. And not one man, woman, or child on this path could avoid its disaster. No longer deceived by the false claims of the broad path, the traveler falls to his knees in repentance. Show me the path that leads to life, he pleads. Again he is directed to the small gate, the narrow path. The traveler eagerly begins his new adventure toward the eternal kingdom. On this path he will experience sorrow, but he will be comforted. He may not be rich, but his expectation is in an eternal treasure. He will experience injustice and be affected by immorality, but his hunger for God's righteousness will be satisfied. He will practice mercy and likewise be shown mercy. Along the narrow path, the traveler will be changed. His heart will be made pure and his eyes will see God. And even though he will be misunderstood and persecuted, the kingdom of heaven is his. Jesus says, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. The narrow way alone carries the treasure of the gospel. And the gospel is this, that Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to scripture. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. This Minister Riggs back again. Wasn't that a cool video? Do you know how to lead someone to salvation now? Do you understand what it means to be saved? Okay, good deal. Now we're going to go ahead and have our closing prayer. And I want you to repeat after me. Repeat it so you can just seal it in your heart to Jesus. Close your eyes and just focus on the Lord. Dear Jesus, thank you. Thank you for loving me so much. Thank you, Father God, for sending Jesus, your only begotten Son, died on the cross for our sins and rose again with all power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that you did this for the whole world. For whomever believes in you, Jesus, shall be saved. Thank you, Lord. Let your love and your blessing shine on us forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. See you later, rock friends. I sure miss you guys. Thank you so much for participating in the Rock Children's Church. If you are visiting with us on the count of three, tell us your name. One, two, three. Hi, new rock friend. We are so thrilled to have you with us. For all returning rock friends, we are so glad to have you back. If you brought your BFF, Please stand for show and tell. If you brought your B, Bible, 
Show it to us. That's right, hold them up high. Oh, now we can see them. Yes, those Bibles look nice. And some of them even look used, which means you've been reading them. Great job. Make sure you use them daily to read this week's memory verse. Remain standing if you have an F friend. Did you invite a friend or a family member to join you online today? If you did, great job! You are on your way to becoming a great disciple. We know children are the most cheerful givers. We have saved this F for last. F, finances. That is your offering. Wait, where is it? Hmm, I thought I had it here somewhere. Oh, I remember. I gave online. Stand up and show your offering. Come on, show your offering with your best smile. Give your offering to your adult and ask them to help you choose the best way to give. As always, go to the Rock Children's Ministry Facebook group to show us your videos and pictures of you worshiping and studying your memory verse. Politely ask your adults to message your letters and your prayer requests. One of our favorite activities is to bless you. Please stand. Place your hand on your forehead and receive your blessing. And remember, say amen at the end. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you peace. See you soon. If you rock it with the rock, then you rock it with